Now let's talk about Docker containers. And to understand Dockers, you have to understand the need for software partitioning on drones. By default, Intel Aero is shipped with Yocto Linux builds. It is great as an embedded build system for professionals, including in the aeronautics sector where it is widely used and appreciated. But it is not very friendly for rapid prototyping. There is no packages uh, available uh, online and not everybody is using uh, Yocto. So some may prefer an operating system like Ubuntu Linux um, or Debian to develop their application uh, quickly. So how do we get the best of both worlds? We want path to production on the embedded Linux with Yocto and we want rapid prototyping with uh, Debian or Ubuntu. The other problem we have is that drone developers create flat stacks to operate the drone. It has to be validated, sometimes certified to make sure it's safe to fly. But drone clients, the ones that are potentially paying the drone operators to fly a fleet of drones, may want to add their own code to the drone, their software payload as we call it, can perform value tasks like image analysis during the flight or internet access, storage, uh, and it does not have the same limitation as a flight code because even if this piece of code is buggy, it is not impacting the flight on the safety of uh, everybody involved. Um, so to speed up development and keep the drone safe to fly, it's better to keep the two software stack clearly separated partition. So we need a separation mechanism between the fly stack and the software payload. So that's why we have Docker on Intel Aero. There are several ways to create this separation on the choice of OS for deployment. On Intel Aero, we use containers. A container is a set of resources like CPU, memory, file access, allocated to a set of processes inside the Linux operating system. It's a lot like a virtual machine, but much lighter and efficient because it works at the process level and not at the OS level. So that's a characteristic of modern uh, Linux kernel. It is very popular in the server world where the toolbox Docker is allowing you to create development environments, for example, on your station, Linux, Mac, or Windows, and migrate them to server uh, seamlessly. So it's useful for production and for development. And to summarize, container behave a lot like a virtual machine, but also like a way to package and deploy apps. Here's how you would typically work with a uh, Docker. First, you would start from an existing base image, let's say Ubuntu 16.04, or Yocto or anything else that is supported by Docker. And when you create your image, it will download all the necessary files so you don't have to download Ubuntu or your base image, it will be done for you. Then when you have it, you launch or instantiate this container with the command docker run. And docker run will download the image if you don't have it already. Then when the instance is running, you connect to this instance with docker exec. You can uh, now have shared access to the instance and uh, install packages, modify files, do whatever changes you would do on a running system. Then you commit the changes to create a new image from this instance with the command docker commit. And next time you can instantiate this custom image or you can even move it to another machine for deployment. So in many ways, containers are like virtual machines, but in some ways they are not. So be careful and try to understand the Docker on container concept. Now let's talk about networking. The container engine that is running, it's Yocto in our case on Intel Aero, that is running on the bare hardware uh, is acting as a router on a DHCP server for all the containers that are instantiated on the machine. So by default, containers have network access, uh, but they need to ask the container engine uh, if they want to host servers. 
it's a bit like being connected to a home router at home. You have internet access, it's fine, you can access all the servers outside, but your laptop or your mobile phone can't be a server itself. You have to configure the router with what they call port forwarding uh, to be able to listen to network calls from internet. It's exactly the same here, and you have a flag when you instantiate your image asking to forward some ports to your local port. So if you want to listen to uh, SSH connection, uh, to receive SSH connection from the network, from your container uh, instance, for example, you can use the flag uh, minus P uh, 2022 uh, forwarding to port uh, 22. So here's an example of uh, using Docker. So I'm connecting on Aero and I'm creating a Docker file where I will describe how my image will be built, starting from Ubuntu, installing a few things like uh, OpenSSH server and setting a root password. Then I will create an image from this uh, Docker file. It will download Ubuntu. It will then launch the Ubuntu uh, setup and try to install packages uh, also from internet. So for example, here I asked to install OpenSSH server. Now that my image is created, I will use Docker Run to actually instantiate the image and I will ask to forward port uh, 22. Okay, it's running, I have a unique ID, but I don't have access to the image yet. If I run Docker PS, I can see all the image being instantiating and if I run Docker image, I can see the different images that are available for instantiation. So on Intel Aero itself, I have a Docker Zero network interface that is called uh, 1701. And you will see that when we are connected with Docker exec inside the Docker instance, we have 1702 and 3, 4, 5, etc. for the next instances. So I have internet access, no problem. I have a local IP. Intel Aero, the container engine, is acting as a router. And now when I'm trying to SSH to Aero from my workstation, it works as usual because I was already connected. And if I try to connect from my workstation to the instance, specifically by using a different port, I have a new uh, connection that is uh, possible. So I can access both the Yocto running on Aero and the Ubuntu container running on top of Yocto on Aero. So uh, in terms of um, cleaning, if I want to stop the image, I can use Docker stop on RM to remove the image on RME to remove the image. You see, nothing else is running with PS and uh, only Ubuntu is left in terms of images. Thanks.